this is not super new, but uh, I, I wanted to do some research before getting into this. Obviously, a big deal for people who sell on Etsy or people, even people who just purchase on Etsy. Etsy is cutting 11% of the workforce. That's a big deal. So I want to go into a few different articles I found. This one, and by the way, all of these resources resources are linked in the description box if you want to take the time and uh, read all about it yourself. Etsy is going to be cutting 11% of the workforce. Uh, the online marketplace said reducing its headcount by 225 people, including its current chief marketing officer, will help s- maintain a sustainable cost structure. This is from Retail Dive. I've actually found a f- quite a few good articles on retail trends and different things happening on this site. All right, so basically they're laying off 11% of the workforce, 225 employees, uh, due to the challenging macroeconomic environment. CEO Josh Silverman wrote in a note to employees, Wednesday was the last day of employment for many of those let go. And this is like from a few weeks ago, so they've already been like, that sucks though. They were laid off right right before the holidays. That That stinks. As part of a restructuring plan, Chief Marketing Officer Ryan Scott and Chief Human Resources Officer uh, Kamaria Seymour will both leave the company on December 31st, according to a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, whenever a publicly traded company makes a big change in the, the workforce like this, I believe they're required to file this report with the SEC, so that's why we know about it. Uh, Chief Operating Officer Raina Moskowitz will become the Chief Operating and Marketing Officer, while Tony Thompson, Etsy's Vice President of People and Talent Strategy since 2020, replaces Moskowitz on January 1st. CEO Josh Silverman said, well, the Etsy marketplace is more than double the size it was in 2019. Uh, Gross merchandise sales have remained flat since 2021. Employee expenses had grown despite pausing hiring and other cost-cutting measures. This is ultimately not a sustainable trajectory, and we must change it, Silverman said. All right, so I'm going to read the Dives insight, and then I'll share some of my own insight as well. As someone who purchases and sells on Etsy, uh, Etsy's workforce will fall to about 1,770 people as a result of the job cuts That will leave the company's headcount similar to early 2022 levels, Silverman said in the announcement. Following extensive discussions and analysis with senior leaders, it was apparent that a leaner, more agile team... I'm going to kind of switch things up a little bit. All right, here we go. Was, uh, all right. It was apparent that a leaner, more agile team would enable us to properly focus on our key growth priorities, move bold and fast, and maintain a sustainable cost structure. Silverman said letting go of some employees was absolutely not an option we wanted to pursue, but it was a necessary business decision. So Etsy's uh, severance package includes 16 weeks of base pay, so about four months, uh, plus one week off for one week for each full year of service, a payout of accrued unused paid time off, a year of COBRA health cover- care coverage for U.S. employees, including mental health support, and three months of career service support. Uh, departing employees can also keep their company laptops. I will say that's as someone who now I've never been affected by a layoff in my corporate career in media, but uh, I have seen a lot of the severance packages from corporate media companies, and this is actually pretty good. Getting four months plus uh, one week for every year of service, that's that's not bad. Uh, a lot of severance is like one or two months. So four months is actually fairly generous. Uh, Cobra benefits, I, I've seen how much the that insurance costs, and it's astronomically expensive, uh, not even usually worth doing, in my opinion. All right, the company, okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, all right. So yeah, it looks like they... The workforce they had just wasn't keeping up with the revenue they're bringing in. Plus, let's be real, the pandemic era was not, that wasn't real. Like, that was a very artificial boom that a lot of companies saw. So to me, like, that really makes sense. All right, so Etsy on Wednesday also updated its fourth quarter guidance. The company now estimates that on a a year-over-year basis, 
its consolidated gross merchandise sales will decline approximately 2 to 1%, and its adjusted EBITDA margin, not really sure what that is, will range from 27 to 28%. The restructuring plan is not expected to materially impact Etsy's primary guidance metrics, gross merchandise sales, revenue, and adjusted EBITDA for the fourth quarter. Uh, despite near-term growth challenges, we continue to like Etsy's longer-term growth opportunities yeah i don't know about that in the u.s and abroad and believe its unique marketplace is difficult to replicate uh, etsy isn't alone in announcing holiday layoffs hasbro announced that it's cutting 1100 jobs that's the toy company and online retailer zulily which recently said it planned to lay off more than 800 in february has accelerated those plans i believe they're like close i think zulily is like kind of closing altogether from what i understand so, all right, we're going to look at another article here. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a few. So this one is from uh, CNBC here. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of news of this, uh, these layoffs here. Okay, let's take a look at the CNBC article. Okay, similar, similar information here. All right, there's Josh. A lot of people really don't seem to like him. Um, and since the company went public, a lot of people I know have said they don't really like all of the changes. I know there's been a lot of uh, fee hikes. And Etsy seems to have been over now be kind of overrun with a lot of the drop shippers and like the mass produced crap we all have been seeing. So Etsy, in my opinion, is not what it once was. All right. Similar information here. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, Etsy layoffs will cost between $25 million and $30 million, the bulk of which will be used for severance payouts, uh, employee benefits, and other related costs. Uh, over time, the restructuring is expected to deliver, mean to deliver meaningful operational efficiencies and cost savings and or cost avoidance, especially when it comes with salary costs and benefits. Uh, the restructuring is expected to be complete by the end of the first quarter of 2024. All right, here's same information. So, here's the thing. I, I've i worked in for a larger corporation, and it does seem like when you get to that level, there are a lot of jobs that seem to be kind of unnecessary. Like, th there will be, like, people in, like, middle management or people that, you know, work at the company headquarters that don't even seem, you don't even really know what they do. They seem to go to meetings a lot and send emails, but they don't have a lot of real work. So in a lot of these corporations, there seems to be a lot of room where you can like trim the fat, so to speak, or like cut them out and you really don't notice a difference in terms of the performance. So it seems like there, I don't know exactly which jobs are getting cut, but my guess is that there are probably a lot of positions like that. And yeah, it is kind of frustrating as someone who is more of the worker bee at a corporation to see all these people making six-figure salaries and you don't even know what the heck they do. And those are typically the first that get cut in a recession or in a company restructuring because they're just not really very useful positions. So, I mean, I'm sure there probably were quite a few areas where Etsy could cut those people out again I know it sucks to be laid off but at the same time you do see a lot of bloat in corporate America where there's a lot of jobs that just they're they're like overpaid these people are overpaid for what they do they don't do a lot and they're not really necessary so I don't know it is what it is I mean it's 11 percent what do you guys what do you guys think about all this you know I'm the, in fact there's probably even more like, they, they could probably trim further and be really cutthroat with the layoffs. I know it kind of sucks for the people that remain because then you end up having to pick up the slack for your colleagues. But, you know, let's be real. There are a lot of jobs at these corporations where the workload is, is pretty light. So even giving those people more work, that would probably be more like a regular job at that point. But... I, I've seriously been in situations where I've, I've physically seen people who don't do much. They get paid $75,000 a year, $100,000 a year, $150,000 a year. 
And these people always seem to have a lot of time to like shop online at their desk, go down to the cafeteria, go out to eat, take three hour lunches. And these are pretty cush jobs that aren't really that crucial to the operations. So I'm sure Etsy probably had positions like that. Now, if you were affected by the layoffs, I'm very sorry to hear that, you know, and I might be wrong, but I'll just say firsthand, I've seen, I've seen this and there do tend to be a lot of positions like that where they're just very cush, very overpaid. And those are the first to get cut when you hit any sort of a turbulence with the economy or with the company itself. So, all right, let's take a look at another article here. All right, so this one is from Inc.com, How Etsy Layoffs Affect Its Shop-Owning Sellers. Uh, the online marketplace's recent job cuts may hurt small businesses that rely on it. All right, all right. Etsy, the online marketplace that thousands of small businesses and solo entrepreneurs use as a sales platform, laid off 11% of its workforce. All right, the staff reductions worry the mainly female small business owners who have already seen sales flag as shoppers head for alternative platforms. All right, kind of, all right, I'm going to skip over some of the redundant stuff. Okay. All right, here we go. Shop owner uh, Tana Zabrowski sells custom candles, handmade art, and other personalized home goods products. From her shop, a favor design studio, Zabrowski says there are too many dishonest sellers who on Etsy who are listing store-bought items for less. That's that's definitely a problem. Uh, Etsy criteria keeps an eye on all the products sold on its platform, trying to ensure they're handmade or fit its artisanal factory criteria. Uh, but Zabrowski says Etsy has been overlooking shops defying this pro- policy hurting handmade sellers. That's a good point, and that is an issue on Etsy. And you could wonder, with fewer people at Etsy, are they going to be able to, you know, gloss over more of those types of shops? I've seen a lot of stuff on Etsy that's very questionable, selling-wise. All right. Uh, Speaking before the layoff announcement, Zabrowski said her concern with the job cuts is Etsy losing the manpower it needs to crack down on these crucial policies. Uh, The studio owner said Etsy has told users it is working on handling those defying the policy, uh, but to enforce their handmade policy, it has to be policed. So it is hard to understand laying people off, Zabrowski said. You know, that's that's a good point. At the start of the the pandemic's e-commerce boom, Etsy had nearly doubled its headcount between 2020 and 2022, peaking at 2,790 people, according to its recent regulatory filings. That's a fairly large workforce. The online marketplace has seen its revenue growth slow sharply over the past three years as e-commerce demand slowed and shoppers turned to retailers offering cheaper alternatives. Uh, Josh Silverman said this week's organizational restructuring was in response to essentially flat sales. That makes a lot of sense. Etsy management says a leaner, more agile team would would enable us to move, hold, and fast. According to shop owners like Zabrowski, Etsy was struggling with moving bold and fast before the layoffs, especially when it comes to protecting its small businesses. Uh, People will take advantage and put the handmade sellers out of business. So I think the shop owner has some valid concerns. I've seen a lot of stuff on Etsy that was like not supposed to be on Etsy, like people just reselling random stuff. I've seen people selling counterfeit items. We've seen a lot of people selling stuff that's definitely not handmade. And now we've also seen the rise of all of these print-on-demand shops that are selling, like, AI-generated designs or stuff that's not really designed by the person. So it's like, at what point is that not really handmade? Now, I sell supplies, which is fine, but a lot of people are selling stuff that it's very clear they're trying to pass off as being like handmade, you know, one of a kind stuff when it's clearly not. So that is uh, definitely, definitely an issue, I think. Uh, So I think it'll be interesting to see how these layoffs do affect the day-to-day operations of Etsy and to see how, how well this company moves in terms of, you know, a lot of people are very distrustful of Etsy now because 
they I've seen, you know, they they order something they think is handmade and then they find it on Amazon for half the price. So I think that's a fairly large concern. And as a seller myself, I I think the Etsy reputation is very important. And I think the more they let people get away with that type of activity, the less people are going to want to shop there. So I definitely can see that being a problem. And if we take a look at the current Etsy stock price, um, look, look at the trajectory between, oh, oh wait, let me put this back up. Look at the traje trajectory between 2019 and now. So the company has been public, I think, since like 2015. The stock price started off around $27. Here's 2019, around $55. All right, 2020, look at start of the pandemic, skyrockets to, all right, $291 in 20, in December of 2021. And this makes a lot of sense because, you know, people were at home, people were spending money online, and people had time. People really had a lot more time to focus on trying to get into making things online. A lot of people started Etsy shops during the pandemic. A lot of people had more disposable income. We had the stimulus checks. So it makes a lot of sense why Etsy saw this meteoric rise during the COVID lockdowns and during the pandemic because, I mean, check this out. $220 February 2021. Yeah, almost three, like it got to almost 300 bucks. And then look at, took a dive, Starting in 2022, you know, not any better in 2023. And now the Etsy stock is about $75 from a record high of about $291. I think a lot of companies are in the same boat. So I, I'm not, I think Etsy is definitely not an exception here. A lot of companies saw just massive growth during the pandemic and then things came back down to earth. And now they're not seeing like sales have flatlined or declined. And now people have kind of gone back to like their regularly scheduled programming. And I mean, this makes total sense as to why Etsy grew massively during the pandemic. And then now they're just, you know, they're definitely not seeing the kind of growth they were during uh, this time period. So I think this makes total sense. And I think a lot of companies kind of get over ahead their skis and then they're like, oh, it's going to be like this forever. A lot of Etsy shops dealt with the same thing. And a lot of companies that started during the pandemic, they thought the sales would always be gangbusters. And now we're seeing things kind of come back down to a more realistic level. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, things are, you know, they're freaking out because, you know, again, people... We're seeing things like inflation. There's been layoffs at quite a few different companies now. And, you know, people aren't spending as much money. So they don't have as much disposable income to spend on learning a new hobby. People are not home as much. And they're not spending as much money on stuff like, you know, Etsy products. So 